Hello everybody, Amiga 3000 Tower, Mr. Jack, day 15 or so, not steady, I took the ROM sockets off again, I'm using the Sprint Layout Viewer for the 3000D, which pin wise is the same, the destinations for the pins are going to go to the same thing, just the layout on the tower is totally different. I printed out the Sprint Layout Viewer picture of the ROMs because on a 3000D they're this way, on a tower they're this way, pointing to the left or the right at the top, but I have to work upside down because it's closer for me here. Anywho, long ago I socketed the FPU because it was totally destroyed, so I removed it so I could touch pins here I'm going to zoom into the sanded again down stuff of broken dreams, mainly this area here. And I'm just, I sanded it down. It's white from the fiberglass pen. I will clean it up. I just want to make sure everything's 100% pin correct. I'm also pinning out the ROMs because it was acting like it had no ROMs. I removed the ROMs and it did the same thing. So this is going to take an extremely, extremely long time. So I'm taking a red Sharpie marker and marking a check mark on that one pin because that's all I've got done. So that's what I'm going to work on for the next five or six hours, maybe off and on, maybe a couple days I'll take. And I will report back if I find something groovy. I'm going to bodge wire some additional fishizzles underneath here to go with the bodge wires that are already there for the FPU. Double check them while you're in there before you go and put a socket back in. One positive note, I did the old baking soda and uh, cyanacrylate trick. You can see, I don't know how well, in here there's some schmutz of concrete. That's baking soda on top of, uh, it, it's just a wonderful job. Just cranked it on in there. See that big white glob? It does have a normal tab that sticks to the side, so it's like a nub that sticks up the hole right here. Comes out of the case, so you don't really break it. Anyway, I just gooped the living crap out of it and uh, sprinkled baking soda all over it, squished it in there. It instantly hardens up. I did the same for the top two posts. I just shoved it on in there. This still needs to be cleaned up, but the pressure tabs are now back on. I need to retro bright this and really clean it up, but I've just been kind of holding off on it until I get the board kind of started up that like I just don't you know I said I'd be back if there was a significant update there's a significant update I went through all these boogers IC709 has low continuity on everything I don't know why it's one of the 745s down here anyway you're gonna notice I have some more spaghetti so I had a couple weird issues because of the battery acid and the top and the bottom and my FPU socket that was all chewed up up here. So I've had to, you know, work around all that, but we're doing pretty good so far. And I'm not going to do the ROM sockets until I do the FPU pins. I had one goofy one where I had to go through a hole here and touch a copper wire. It was crazy. Yep the fun of repairing logic boards with bad eyes and not a lot of time. I have been so swamped repairing other Amigas for people and that's totally fine. I enjoy helping you guys out. Slow down, my brother. I got six more in, but please do not contact me if you're just going to get your stuff fixed and sell it on eBay. We don't do that here. Or if you're a reseller store that has a complicated project that you don't feel like investing the time into, so you'll ship it to Chris so he'll free pair it and then you'll sell it. That's not a nice thing to do, not very honest. Whoop! I'm gonna run to Walmart and get myself battery. Hello, crazy man. It is 1.50 1 50 p.m. I don't even know what day. This black and white thing was not cutting it. I chicken scratched all over this so much. I didn't know what the heck I needed to do. It's about 1 a.m. in the morning when I finally finished up and said, hey, you have to work tomorrow. For the better part of the day, off and on, in between chicken tenders and western fries, I decided I'm going to reprint just some ROMs. I'm not worried about address lines or what they mean, because they're all wrong between the 500 and the 3000. The addresses are totally different, doesn't matter, useless information. 
just so I'd have a place to write cleanly. I made a U181 and a U180. I wrote A3KT back so I know which direction the dip slot thing and I'm just rechecking myself. But anyway, I chicken scratched out a couple things that I fixed. I still have low continuity on U709. On everything, does that mean it's bad? I don't know. As I run into any issues, I'm going to have to go and fix my boo-boos and rewire them. Underneath here is looking like a snake pit. This is called function over fashion. If this works and I feel like it, and anyone would see it, I might clean this up. I probably won't. So I had to go full-blown stupid style and run a wire under the socket to the leg through a hole that used to be a battery. This one went on top into a via. This one I had to get from underneath because it was on a sticker or something. I don't know. Anyway, I just marked myself a, hey, this is pin one because the silk screen wore off. So I slid some wire underneath down the hole and underneath to the spaghetti farm. But right now it's about getting it running. I have been working on this board for two months. Two months. Not this one. That one's been pretty good. Dang it. And that thing keeps happening. Three o'clock. Started writing okay. Went line to the FPU. Broke it or still does not work. Only had one weak one to DMAC. Seventh pin from the right bottom. Eh, DMAC to the CPU where it goes is okay. I'm going to leave it. If it becomes a problem, I know it's just that one connection. I'll bodge wire that. Yep, we got some spaghetti on the bottom. I don't really care how it looks. Hello from about four days later. It is currently 9 p.m. I've given away two of the four based on you guys' comments, so thank you guys for that. Your uh, pin straighteners are in the mail, and thanks to Frank from Retro Re Rewind for supplying them. So, what have I been doing? Well, fun, fun, fun. And I have printed out the 68882, or the 882 as I just call them, pinout, uh, printout, I mean printout, so I could do the pinout continuity test. Found several blown traces. I have since already ordered replacement 25 megahertz FPUs. Hey everybody, so we're back. I spent the better part of an hour, I put diagram in it, got my sockets in, I dug through my stuff and got my chip RAM, diagram is in, no fast RAM is in, is this recording? Yes it is, here we go. Oh yes, I got diagram, got nothing on the screen though, oh there we go. We're going to do a right click, that way we get it, alright we got mouse. System info, here we go. We got all yellows, which is good. This looks nice and clear. Holy crap, you know how long I've been working on this board? Okay, so 68030, 68882, blah, 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 blue. Two megs of chip, which is fine. No fast, which is fine. I don't see any, I don't know what this means. So that's okay um, let's go to the audio tests we're gonna play the test module we're in the Davoom Tivu one second there we go good alright IRQ CIA IRQs should all pass press any key to start alright I don't have an IRQ7 button, so failed. All right, let's do CIAs. I'm NTSC, so it'll always fail on NTSC. Flashing on screen is fully normal. This one will fail. Okay. We're good to go. All right, so that's actually already in flicker fixer mode. Let's go RGB. Perfect. Amber flicker fixer scan doubler. Booyah. Let's go RGB off the Amiga kit, dude. The RGB to VGA, perfect. We're just gonna leave it in that for now, even though it looks a little 320 by two whatever. Perfect. Scroll, perfect. Raster, yep. 
What do we got? Pick a card, any card. 204 rums. That's what All right, we are looking for the low high here. Low, high. Booyah! Do I get a picture? Yeah. That's not right. We still have some ROM line problems, but we have enough to let it boot diagram, which is cool. I'm not getting any weird crashes. We are getting the low high reset. That's great. I'll check Denise because she was in the line of barf. You know how it works. It's the only chip I did not check. I am so pleased that work has paid off into a 90% almost ready Amiga. But I have, to, I have a lot to do. I gotta get the RAM in. It's like 10.40 p.m. Friday night. Yes, I should be able to stay up for another couple hours. I'm exhausted. I'm extra pleased. At least I have a white screen and diagram functions, which is even better. Almost done. Look at that. Look at that. 16384, 16384, all good, no errors, yes, that is perfect. Oh, Amiga fans, it is currently 1145 on Saturday. So, long story short, check this out. So here's my doohickey, my power light, we'll go low, high, I'm going to turn this overhead off. We're going to keep it on the monitor, I do have the 2.0 ROMs in here, low, high, just put this down, and after no no uh, boot floppy, no floppy boot zero, it is uh, now rocking along. Mortimer, we're back. Woo freaking who? Now the cool thing is, I'm gonna turn on my Devoom TV. That's my uh, my little device here, Devoom.com. Same as the one that you really can't see around the corner there. We're going to switch this to go to 3.5 millimeter in. Here's that one. There we go. And we're going to do the Amiga Test Kit Kier Frazier. Just real quick. Uh, we're going to go to uh, audio. My left mouse button is not working. There, there we go. One plugged in all the way. Strong audio. Yes. Uh, memory, we have 18 megs total, 16 fast, 2 chip, that's all great, I'm not testing it right now. Uh, floppy drive I don't have in, CIA precision timers, this is more NTSC friendly, we are good. Uh, RPC, we have the MSM 6242 detected, um, not worried about that now, it's April, the year is zero, so maybe I should just set a year, April, April 1, April... Yeah, that's that's good. All right, so um, keyboard I'm not worried about. My video RGB is clear, uh, static, checkerboard. We are in Dene uh, Amber Flicker Fixer, so I can RGB it here on the 15 kilohertz side of the 31 or DB15 plug of of Amber, and the same thing RGB uh, pixel and checkerboard. Uh, CIAs, all that stuff works. I'm just gonna scan double it again because why not? She's working. And uh, we can switch it to 50 hertz, pal. Looks fine. It does say that I am uh, 2.04, 60 to 30. Now the ultimate test is, here we go, power, low, high. Do I get a ROM screen? Do. Son of a bitch. Now we have the three two ROMs. I do have the original floppy drive that I shown uh, before how to uh, adjust the head on the stepper motor where you twist and turn. But for now, I'm not I'm just gonna ignore that and I'm gonna hook up the power to the drive upside down and backwards, and we're gonna put the Amiga test kit in there again and we're just gonna leave it upside down turn it on we should be able to boot this disc it is DF0 there it goes 
I'm just going to do the head calibration. We're going to go to floppy drive. Let me zoom in here. I apologize. So I booted Amiga test kit at the main menu. I chose floppy drive. DF0 is my signal. And we're going to do a head calibration test. Now this relies on you having a good disk. And you'll see this is 11 of 11. And you can hit F2 on your keyboard. In this case, I'm just going to click. This will move the head to cylinder 40. That's halfway up. And you're still looking for this 11 of 11. Finally, 79 will be your third. And an 11 of 11. So we're rocking along. And we can reseek the cylinder if you get a boo-boo. And the idea is, if you've seen the Amiga 3000T, my Amiga 3000T, this guy right here, uh, part one repair or two, I forget where I adjust the head and I teach you how to do that. If you got any of these old busted drives lying around, preferably ones with the magnetic drive or the, the motor drive, not the belt, they are a nightmare. I'm um, getting the rotations and the magneto photo pick, photo cell pickup, and it gets really ugly. So, roll back to that video, you can see how I actually adjust and fix a floppy drive for that machine which is totally fine now and how I did it incorrectly and then I did it correctly so important safety tip if you do calibrate your drive please use a, a floppy like the instructions say that has been written and verified on another disk that is good or a drive that is good sorry and then you can fix your busted drive so she's good she will run all day long Bootable sysinfo. Uh, 47.102 up here at the top. That means 3.2.1, uh, 3000, 0 0.98, 25 megahertz, 68.882. I just call them 882s or 68.82. Uh, I skip an 8 for some reason. 68.030 uh, in use. Calabunga, 15 kilohertz. Your mom. Oh. 4,574 dry stones, 4.77 MIPS, and 0 0.66 floating operations per second. Someone's at the front door. Great! So I got a package in from overseas, and I would just like to first thank the person that did that. They know who they are. I got some UK candy. This is a Cadbury, what is that, Bourneville? Bourneville Orange Dark Chocolate. 100% sustainably sourced cocoa. That is going to be epic. Calories, that doesn't matter. A Cadbury dairy milk. That is awesome. Fat, please. Classic creamy taste. Uh, I'll have to put this one in the refrigerator. She's a little melted. All right. I'm going to get this sorted, and we'll get cleaned up and back to it. Okay, so after several hours, I have the motherboard and the drive tray all back in. I also have the 3D printed feet, courtesy of Mr. Darren's brain and his amazing job at modeling one of my actual tower feet. So the full-size model here with the balls and the female version, no balls, and actually a little shorter here to fit on an Ender 3 uh, compatible printer. So, I also, in the meantime, while I was printing that, printed out a bracket for the SCSI to SD that you saw me tinkering around with earlier. Luckily on this, the SCSI to SD version 5 uh, is powered by the SCSI here, so I don't need a Berg. I shouldn't need a Berg. So, this 6 foot 8 cable that comes with it, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to try and kind of ball up everything here. I put, ouch! cut my finger, I put a heat sink, as you can see, right about there on the O30. It's just a Raspberry Pi heat sink. And uh, so I'm going to put the SCSI to SD up here in this bracket thing at the top. I got the tape on. Uh, first I'm going to try and get a cable up there and find which way is the right way. And okay, that'll be that way. Will that fit? Yes, it will. I'm going to shove this in, in here. I don't have the bracket thing. I'm missing one of these things for this. So that's going to be fun. Where's my light? Okay, so that's plugged in at the very top. That's fun. This is just a big girl. I'm going to do the next best thing and just roll all this up. And just kind of give it the old Thailand tuck. There is a little grippy thing up the top here where I can hold the floppy cable. But I'm just going to ignore that floppy's in, there's no power to the drive, 
close that over with some tape we're hooked up we're just gonna hit it now remember this still has that loud 12 volt fan so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that because it's noisy and not really needed for this beast so we are in VGA and here we go we're gonna watch for the low high and oh, hard drive light look at that didn't even plug that thing into power does it work yeah I have studio 16 put on here too because I want to uh, do this I want to test this this is my Sunrise 801012 she's a mono card but I want to re-rip some uh, music mods into 16 bit and I'm going to do that on each side by doing some crazy crap with Studio 16. So, there we go. Anyway, that about completes it. We have a 3000 tower that I copied all my stuff from my 3000 just to the SCSI SD to make sure she's all working good and shape shifters on there. It's never going to run that fast. Now, this is a stock Amiga. 3000 tower. It's going to say it's an Amiga 3000. They don't define tower or not. Um, you just kind of look at the tower. And 24.8 megahertz. Yeah, it's 25. Close enough. Uh, we have workbench or kickstart version uh, 321 47102. Here's the new ATK, of course. 68030. There we go. Oh. Every time I work, every time I do this, Magic Workbench says, Hi, I'm going to ignore your boot process. I'm going to run a speed test on here versus my tower 4.4. We're going to go to drives, DH0, and hit speed. And you can't see any of that, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Speed. Well, this is SCSI to SD. It's probably about a meg. If it's lucky, I don't know. 906K. That sucks. That really sucks, even for SCSI of the day. And that kind of, that's kind of crap. I called it Poop Turd. Can you see my drive name here? Poop Turd. And that's what it is. It's a SCSI to SD. Thanks, Poop Turd. 62% full. It was just a test to see if the SCSI to SD works, and it does. So, look, guys, we have another Amiga 3000 Tower. Oh, but wait, there's more. Those things. Well, I broke one. And it's in the in the thing up here. So I gotta do this again because I lost one. But they were clipping on fine. I banged into this thing and it popped it. It's no big deal. You can see the concrete there. It's still broke clean. And I can just re-cement this on. And it'll be as good as new. That's good. This massive wall. That gets clicked on by the leg clicky things here. I have four screws. Now, this one, unlike mine, doesn't have the cutout for a toaster. That's a good thing. This one's serial number 588 of a supposed, I don't know, 8,000 made of sold. I don't know. Final piece of the puzzle, of course, is the plate. And the bottom clicks in place. And that is a completed 3000 tower full repair little bit of retro burning I did on these two pieces but they're just so stained I would have to do a peroxide soak on them and they'll have to be removed and it needs a cleaning it's got a couple scuff marks here and there but she's a beautiful girl another 3000 tower has been saved this one from Mr. Jack and she turned out really good so that's all I got for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.